Guys, we wanted to talk to you about an extremely hot story on the Huffington Post right now. Take a look at my computer screen to check out the headline. Our new Harvard study has confirmed, according to a blog post by Dr. Joseph Mercola, that fluoride, which is present in a lot of drinking water, uh, reduces children's IQ. Here's the study. This is what it looks like. Um, and it's from uh, Harvard, Harvard University. And the key finding is right here. It says, Findings from our meta-analysis of 27 studies published over 22 years suggest an inverse association between high fluoride exposure and children's intelligence. The results suggest that fluoride might be a developmental neurotoxin that affects brain development at exposures much below those that can cause toxicity in adults. Alona's here on set with me. Um, I think for a lot of people, it's probably a pretty scary thing to hear. I think it's definitely a scary thing to hear, but the thing is, it's not the first study of its kind that's shown that fluoride can have negative effects, toxic effects on your body. And, um, you know, and so as, as this article here points out, too, it's almost remarkable that it isn't considered a scientific consensus by now and that people are still still shocked by it. But, you know, this this study in particular, too, is funded by the National Institutes of Health. And, um, you know, it, it, it brings geography into the equation because it's children that live in certain areas where the water is um, you know, has a lot of fluoride in it. There's an infographic that's in the uh, that's actually in the in the blog post that talks about that fluoride. It says is the only drug that's forced as a mass medication of the population with no control of dosing. Because when this is in your your drinking water, I mean, you you, you know, you're you're drinking it if you're drinking tap water, particularly unfiltered tap water. Two of the most common types of fluoride in your drinking water are sodium silica fluoride and hydrofluorosilic acid, which are waste products from the wet scrubbing systems of the fertilizer industry and are classified as hazardous waste. You know, again, um, people think of fluoride as something that might be in your toothpaste, uh, something that might be good for your, for your teeth, but to hear that it could actually harm children um, in ways that it doesn't harm adults, um, it's something that can be frightening and probably, frankly, why this is a, such a widely shared blog post, you know, right now on HuffPost. Yeah, and if you guys go back to the infographic, too, there's a lot more information there, and that's in the resource well. Uh, it shows that there's more than 23 human studies, more than 100 animal studies that link fluoride to brain, brain damage, and um, that 50% of the ingested fluoride is deposited in the bones of children, while only about 10% is stored in those of adults, so it actually can affect children um, even more. And then here's some other statistics too. 41% of American children have dental fluorosis caused by excessive fluoride, and that's according to uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And 99% of all fluoride added to water goes down the drain and into the environment. Right, and that's the thing. You know, um, another thing that the, that the blog post points out is that the effects of fluoride, as you were mentioning, this isn't the first study, and people have known, um, in as the blog post says, by conventional medical organizations for over half a century that there could be potential um, adverse effects of fluoride. Um, in September, all the way back to September 18, 1943, um, an issue of the Journal of the American Medical Association said that um, fluorides are general pro protoplasmic, I wish Carisana Maria was here to sort of go through this with us, but protoplasmic poisons that can change permeability of cell membrane by certain en enzymes. Um, and, and again, guys, if you want to learn more about this, go into the resource well. This is an extremely hot story on HuffPost. It's something that people are sharing um, far and wide right now on Facebook. I think it's got over 3,000 shares. We're curious what you guys think because a lot of people, uh, you know, are, are used to using fluoride. You know, you, you hear about fluoride vitamins as a kid. You hear about fluoride in your toothpaste. And now with fluoride in the drinking water, which is something that, you know, a lot of people may not even actually know about. Um, I think people just, it raises cause for alarm. I think that people probably are unaware. And, I mean, you know, I think that you can even bring economics into it too uh you know i mean you think about getting tap water at right. a restaurant right or just drinking out of the faucet because it's cheaper than bottled water exactly and uh, i want to go into the comments right now and i'm going to see um what you guys are talking about because um again i want to ask you is this something that you knew about is this something um that you didn't know about how concerned are you um and and frankly do you drink tap water straight from the tap or do you filter your tap water um and uh you know are you concerned whether or not these are things that are actually filtered out of the water um, that you drink on a daily basis. Um, you know, I see a POS in 01 saying, if it is too soluble, it becomes rather toxic. Um, uh, 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 Ted some, G. Malik some good questions here too. Yeah. yeah, who's the biggest manufacturer yep. of fluoride, fluoride in the world? In the world. Yep, exactly. All things to look into. And it's really scary too, if you keep looking at this article. Um, you know, there's studies that have shown that fluoride toxicity can lead to many health problems. We're not just talking about lowering your IQ, as with this most recent study, but uh, you know, it can lead to muscle disorders, thyroid disease, arthritis, dementia, bone fractures, lower thyroid function, bone cancer, 
uh, disrupted immune system, increased tumor and cancer rate. So I think it just highlights the importance of really reading up on these studies, knowing what you're putting into your body. And exactly, and obviously, neither Alona or I are medical professionals, and we don't have one joining, no. <laughs> joining us right now. Um, but this is a, a, we wanted to bring it to your attention because it's a very hot story right now on HuffPost. It's being shared um, on Facebook at numbers that are, are um, you know, uh, greater than, uh, than you know, your normal uh, blog posts on the Huffington Post. So we wanted to flag it for you guys, let you take a look at it, um, tell us what you think, and uh, we'll continue to talk about this on HuffPost and, and probably in the days and weeks ahead. There'll be a lot more conversation around this. Uh, all right, guys, we got lots more coming up on HuffPost Live.